There's no blood in this video, no obvious signs of violence. The brutality here is psychological. The woman, a victim of Assad's alleged chemical attack in August. So she's not sure if she's alive or died. And she's... Mohammed Al Abdallah spends 15 hours a day tracking and analyzing the thousands of videos that for two years have defined the Syrian conflict online. The Obama administration has urged Americans to search the web for images of the chemical attack it says will justify military action. But Mohammed says Americans aren't interested. I've been uh, tracking YouTube and see the audience who's watching, and I've never seen Americans literally going and watching YouTube, except some few journalists, handful of people, but you're talking about 300 million. The majority of uh, views is from Saudi Arabia, from the Gulf countries, from Western, but not Americans. So if the YouTube like tracking and statistics are accurate, the, the Americans are not interested really in watching. Other experts agree that images of the war in Syria have had little effect on public debate in the U.S. I've been very struck over the past year or so by the lack of, of impact that is associated with many of these images, including some of the most gruesome images. Um, earlier in this conflict, it seemed to me that some of the images that were being shown in the United States about the humanitarian toll of this conflict, about atrocities that were being committed would have a significant impact on American public opinion, and they haven't. Uh, and that's a very interesting phenomenon. We only ask it for freedom and democracy. Is that really much? Is that a crime? Some videos are obvious attempts at propaganda. Others are aimed at discrediting different factions. This video claims to show opposition fighters dousing men with gasoline and burning them alive. The atrocity took place but in Iraq, not Syria. It's very hard to tell uh, because there is a lot of material that is produced for um, strategic purposes in which images are manipulated uh, for a variety of reasons, both to cast blame on a group that one may be uh, at odds with or to claim credit for something, uh, or simply to in inflame emotions in the hope of generating a response. So it is important to look at these images with a certain degree of skepticism and care. As the online battle for public opinion continues, such images are taking an enormous toll on Mohammed. He was granted asylum in the US after being jailed and tortured by the Assad regime. His family still lives in Damascus. It's very difficult to watch them, to verify them, to hear the contest or the text, especially when there's a mom or a dad crying about their children or telling what's happened. And it's it's not not fun job at all. It's it's not easy. Yeah. But Mohammed keeps watching because he's collecting evidence of war crimes, evidence that he hopes may one day help bring the perpetrators on all sides to justice.